everybody, it's Melanie with Lost and Found. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I honestly am just out doing some thrifting. I'm heading to some antique malls and to some thrift stores. It's been a really long week and y'all, this is just what I do to refresh and have some fun. So raise your hand if you're that kind of person too. You just love going and looking for vintage stuff. That's what we're going to do today. I'm going to take you guys along with me. Hopefully we'll have a nice little haul at the end here to share with you. I'm excited about it. So last week, my husband and I actually spent the week in Mexico. We went for our anniversary and it was such an incredible blessing to be able to go. We had a fantastic time. Uh, we don't like jet set out of the country all the time for our anniversary. We had a credit to this resort. We had free airline miles um, through Southwest Airlines. And so that's what we used to get down there and back. And you guys know that if you are in the stage where we at, where you have school age kids, life is just super, super busy. So to be able to be gone for a week and just chill was such an incredible gift. So we got back crazy late last Friday, like 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> so when we got home with those free airline tickets, you kind of fly at crappy times. So we got back super, super late. And um, this week, you know, it's just the end of school and it's madness. And so we had um, my middle son had his big band concert. My oldest son had his very first AP exam this week. My littlest guy, I had to pick up early from school yesterday because one of his wire braces came out. So we had to get an emergency orthodontist appointment. And that's just the tip of the iceberg of like our regular week. So y'all know if you can, if you're in this stage or you can remember back to being in this stage, my kids are 15, 13, and 10 and it's just nonstop running around. So we got back from being in Mexico, hit the ground running, and then it has literally rained every single day this week. So I have missed the beach so bad <laughs> this week because it has been rainy and cold and we have been so busy and I love where we're at with our family. It is so rewarding and it is so fun, but it is also so exhausting if I'm just honest. So here we are, it's Friday afternoon. I don't have anything on the calendar for the next couple hours before I have to pick up kids from school. So that's why I'm going thrifting because it really is just a refresh for me. I just, I just love it. It's like it, it quiets my mind and I just enjoy the hunt of it, the thrill of it. So anyway, that's just a little bit more about my week. I'm heading into one of my favorite places here in Rogers, Arkansas. It's called the Rose Antique Mall. Let's go see what we can find. This really is a great antique mall. There is always plenty for me to look at while I'm there. And I don't think that I've ever left empty handed. These were one of the first things that I spotted, these hand turned wood bowls. They were 24 a piece, which I think is a really fair price for them. It's more than what I could pay to resell, but they were really, really neat. There are some vendors that have a lot of glassware. So if that's your thing, then you can for sure look here. This was one of the first things that I spotted, a great price on this ironstone gravy boat, and that did come home with me. This was a vendor that I don't remember seeing before. I really liked their space. They were up in the front corner and it kind of had this man cave feel to it. Maybe they've just changed out their inventory, but they had a lot of really neat things. A very cool collection of cameras, and lenses, lots of stuff that just had a really masculine feel to it. And I love these brushes. I love displaying old pictures in them like that. I think that's just a really clever display. $12.50 for those, a little too high for me, but cool brushes nonetheless. And this vendor I buy from a lot. And every time I'm there, their booth is 20% off. And I don't know if that means that it's just always 20% off or maybe just, I happen to catch it every time it is, but because they are running the sale, I always 
pop in there. Um, did spot that Jesus painting back in the corner and decided it just wasn't quite for me. But she did have some pretty dishes. This lamp was really kind of cute. I didn't have a need for it, but I wound up not purchasing anything from her this time. Um, nothing just really struck me as amazing, but she still has a lot of nice things to look through. So this vendor has two large booths and I always look through what she has. Beautiful, beautiful displays. And I actually got the pleasure of meeting she and her husband. They were there um, working on redoing their display. So we had a great chat while I was making this video. And white people, check out all of this blue and white and that beautiful cobalt blue. And then if you guys are brass people, this is like the wall of brass. This vendor always has so much brass. Okay, I found a couple things, including um, this really cool old wooden display piece, which I'll show you guys more later. It's a little bit of glassware, some smalls. Um, I've got some more shopping to do. This is definitely not enough to fill up a full haul for you guys. There's a couple thrift stores down the road. So we're gonna to head to those next, but I just really wanna give a shout out to the ladies at the small. They are always so pleasant, so professional, friendly to work with. Again, this is the Rose Antique Mall. If you are in Northwest Arkansas, you should for sure stop in there. I lied, I forgot about this other flea market right down the road. We're gonna pop into this one. Before we head to any thrift stores, this is called the Hometown Flea Market. Y'all, this is a real flea market, flea market. Like it is one of those places where you've got to dig. I found some awesome stuff here before. I just never know. It's really hit or miss. So we're gonna pop in and see what maybe we can find today. So one thing I'm noticing at these flea markets is that a lot of them are not allowing large purses anymore. And this little Kedzy crossbody bag that I have in my online store is the perfect size for going to these flea markets. It's small enough that I never have to lock it up and it fits all of my stuff in it. So um, you guys should definitely check those out if you are tired of having to lock up your big purse. And like I said, this place, I mean, you just have to dig. I don't even know what in the world that was, but I thought it was kind of funny looking. Whenever I go to this mall, I just have to look really carefully on all the shelves. Um, most of it is not stuff that I would want, but there are definitely some diamonds in the rough there. This vendor had 50% off, and so they had some milk glass. I passed on it because they were just some pretty basic patterns, pieces that I've had before, and I'm not a big fan of the grape pattern. That's just not a big seller for me. It's not my personal favorite. But, you know, not, not terrible prices on their milk glass. And then down here in the bottom, I don't know why they had one shoe. So I guess if you're like missing the pair to this shoe, then, you know, here's one for you <laughs> at this vendor spot. And like I said, this mall has everything, even tiny toilets. Found a couple things in there, some stuff I'm excited to show you guys later. This old Parcheesi board that I grabbed, I think I paid $2.50 for it. I can't really, look at how cool that is. I'm gonna show it to you guys more later, but I think it could be really, really neat. All right, we got time for one more place. I'm gonna run into the Salvation Army thrift store. This place has been a hit or miss, but you never know. I'm literally right down the street from it and I hate to have to drive all the way up here on another day. So let's just pop in and see, you never know. I was disappointed in the selection at the Salvation Army today. Like I said, this one is a hit and miss. 
This was the one thing that I spotted that was kind of cool. I liked that little woven butterfly. I think it's a planter, but three bucks I just thought was too much to ask. One thing that I did want to show you guys is this incredible trunk. Look, it is originally um, from Sydney, Australia. It's like a ship's trunk. Can you imagine traveling that way and having all of your clothing and everything stored in there when you're traveling across the ocean? Look at those gorgeous wooden drawers. And this top one has these pretty dividers in it. And I think they were asking, it was like $65 for this trunk, which I thought was just a great price. I didn't take it home with me because I just don't have a need for it. And I, my booth isn't big enough to sell it right now, but I just thought it was a really, really cool piece. They also had this trunk that's more of a camelback style price on this one uh, 35 I think it's a shame that that top piece right there is broken but it's always fun to look and see what they papered the inside with the date on that I think was in the 1940s just I enjoyed looking at both of these all right so I'm officially out of time now I gotta head home it's school pickup time did not get anything at the Salvation Army, but how amazing were those trunks, especially that first one? Like, I, in person, I've never seen one like that. So, um, I wish that I had a reason to grab it. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't, but it was super cool. So, I'm still glad I went in. I got to see that, and I enjoyed that. All right, so we're back. I've got everything unpacked here in my house, and this is the super fun part of the video where I get to show you the haul. So um, just a reminder, if this is the first time that you've watched one of my thrift haul videos, that most of what I buy, I buy to resell. So I'm always looking for things with pretty low price points that I'm sure I can mark up three to four times. Uh, I do have an antique booth and I also have an online store. The link for that is always down in the video description and then I'll have it up at the top at the end of the video. I share my prices with you guys because I know some of you watching are vintage sellers and so it, it helps you guys to kind of know pricing wise and then i know that some of you guys are shoppers and you like shopping my haul so you know uh works for everybody right so sometimes i will keep something for myself and uh if i know i'm going to keep it for myself i will pay a little bit more than if i was going to sell it sometimes i keep it for myself for a while and then i turn around and sell it i don't know that's the fun thing about this business is that you can kind of keep rotating your decor because you can enjoy it for a little while and then once you're done with it, you can pass it on to somebody else. So anyway, we're gonna get started and we're gonna start first with um, the items that I found at the Rose Antique Mall, which is the first place that we went. Okay, the first item here is this old um, liquor decanter. Now, you may be familiar with the ones that um, are the Jim Bean decanters. There's a lot of those, you know, sometimes they're horses and poodles and. They've got all sorts of um, decorative collectible decanters. This one is not Jim Beam. It is a different company. Um, it is the, well, now I can't find it. Uh, the JW Dance is what it is. So, but I grabbed it because it is um, the Alamo here. And so I lived in Texas for 11 years. I still have a lot of Texas customers. And I figured that somebody would be excited about this whole Remember the Alamo Whiskey Decanter. So, um, still has the labeling on it and it's got, um, you know, the, the shield and the eagle here in the back. Very Americana. So, uh, this was $3, which I think was a very, very fair price. All right, the next thing I found, now these are Jim Beam and this is a oil and vinegar set with the little dogs. Isn't that cute? So um, there's a booth in the Rose Antique Mall that's like the Humane Society, and I find stuff there all the time. And usually their prices are very, very fair because they're just kind of trying to get rid of stuff and raise money for the Humane Society, so it's a win-win. Um, these I was not familiar with, but they, I, they caught my eye and then I looked them up. Um, they're from uh, the mid to late 70s. They do, it's really hard to read on the bottom but they do say um, Jim Beam on the bottom. It's just kind of this collectible set. They appear to be in great shape. They've got the gold rim, 
Um, the colors are still really vibrant on them and they're just, they're just kind of funny. So it was $5 for this set. All right, the next thing I found was towards the back of the store. Uh, there's a couple people back there that usually have a lot of discounted stuff marked down and that's where I like to go dig around. And so I grabbed this pretty bowl. It's just, you know, some depression glass. It's, I mean, it's nothing that's like crazy valuable, but it was marked down to $2, which I thought, hey, for $2, um, you know, there's some money left on that or I can enjoy it at my house. That's kind of a no brainer. So I do like the kind of bubble glass and it's, um, you know, it, it's, it's imprinted right there as around, as you go around, got this pretty pattern. It does have the tiniest of chips right there. I don't even know if you can see it, just tiny. And so maybe that's why it was marked down. It was originally like 10 and the, the dealer had just kept marking it down. So for two bucks, it was worth a risk. It's just a pretty little bowl. Okay, this is super cool. I also found this in the back of the store. This is the most expensive thing that I purchased at $20. And so this is a wooden countertop display for the Mecklenburg Duncan um, Lettering Company. So they were based in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And um, this I'm assuming would sit on a countertop. There's all these little holes they do um, metal lettering. I, I believe the company still exists. Pretty sure, I looked it up. I think they're still making lettering and numbers. And so they would sell um, their letters and numbers from this display. Um, there's all sorts of kind of stuff on it. There's some stuff written. There's kind of the outline of some things here. It's hard to see exactly maybe what was on here. This does um, slide up. It's a little stuck, <laughs> so it's kind of hard for me to get up, but I imagine they put extra stock in here. I don't know. I looked it up, um, looked up the company, looked up their display boards. I found several that were made of metal, but I did not see an image of this one. So um, I don't know. I can't really date it or say um, exactly the value of or the history of it, but I loved that it was wood. I liked the tone of the wood. I liked the wear of the green. I thought anybody that likes any sort of store display, any sort of, you know, um, advertising, that this would just be a really cool piece. And so 20 bucks, I thought that was a fair price. Um, pretty sure I can put it in my booth and uh, get a, a good bit more than 20 for it. And I just thought, I thought it was really interesting. I didn't want to leave it there kind of stuck in the back of the store. I wanted to help it find a new home. All right. Then the last thing I got there back up at the front of the store, um, is this pretty ironstone gravy boat. So yes, it does have, um, a little surface, you know, crack right there. Uh, it was three ninety five. dollars So I'm assuming that's why the price on it was low. It is, um, it's a uh, Meekin. So it has, um, you know, English ironstone. It's got the stamp on the bottom. Sorry for that glare. Um, inside's pretty clean, again, except for that spot. It's got a little bit of the green and the gold. So I don't mind little things like this or even crazing or chips. I don't mind that. The ironstone that I have kind of up there on that shelf, you can see a little bit of it. Um, a lot of that has got some crazing or some discoloration or some chips. That doesn't bother me at all. In fact, I think that's, you know, an easy way to build a collection is if you can find some pieces that um, are not in pristine condition. I think that just adds kind of to their charm. So this doesn't bother me at all. Um, for $3.95, I'm really confident that there's some money left on this, that someone will really enjoy this piece added to their collection. If I don't keep it myself, I might look, wouldn't it like, it would look really pretty just up there, I think with some plants in it. So maybe I'll keep it, I don't know. Okay, moving on to the flea market that we went to. We had to dig a little bit more. I did grab some stuff from there. The first thing is just this sweet little plaque. Uh, it says, only in life, or only one life will soon be passed, only what's done for Christ will last. And then it quotes Philippians verse 121, for me to live as Christ. So small little plaque, um, you know, it's got kind of that enamel painted the little hook on the back, but um, for a dollar, it was a great thing to toss in my cart. All right, another cheap piece is this, um, it's a Bentley's, uh, it's just a, a, a little tin, a little tea tin. I thought the design of it was cute. Um, I grabbed this, it was $1.50, and I grabbed it because I want to try my hand 
at making some candles in some old tins. And so I thought this would be a good one to start with, a <laughs> small size. I've never poured candles before, but um, I think it would be kind of fun. And I'm always finding neat old tins. And so that is something maybe this summer when um, the kids' school schedule slows down some that I might try. So that was really why I grabbed this. So I'm probably gonna hold on to it and use it to try pouring a candle. This was a great find from that flea market. Um, it's a brass, they had it marked as a chalice. Sounds a little fancy to me. Goblet, display, I don't know. But um, it was 350, so it's got this nice kind of little etching on there and on here. Okay, check this out. I wanted to show you, um, I've got these in my online store, these little half spheres, a couple different designs of them. But look at how pretty it is just inside of this. Isn't that great? It fits perfectly. So you can use this little piece for so many different things. Of course, my mind just immediately went to a floral display and that would be beautiful. Again, maybe when I do fall up there on my mantle, that would be so nice. So 350 is a great price for this. If you're interested in these, um, I'll put the link to them right up here for you. All right, this was in the back. There was a booth that had everything half off. And so this was leaning up against the wall and it was just like this. It's an old Parcheesi game and it's fun even on this side, like 1994. I don't know, they've got some uh, keeping score. <laughs> Somebody there I actually don't know how to play Parcheesi. But um, when I opened it up, I thought fantastic, vintage colors, cool art. So great, cool, hang on the wall art piece. It was $2.50, uh, which is a price that was just kind of a no brainer. So this I think is really neat. And I think for sure I can find somebody who is decorating in kind of that mid-mod style, or maybe they're putting together a man cave or a game room. How fun would this be hanging up on the wall with a couple other old board games or even by itself, just because it's so, it's so artistic, really. It's this cool, funky, geometric piece of art, really. So 250, this was a great find. An even better find from that same booth was this box of old flashcards, okay? It is a full, box. Let me show you. I paid also $2.50 for this box. It is completely full of these vintage math flashcards. All right. Now guys, I can sell these flashcards for a couple dollars a piece. <laughs> I have sometimes made my own, like, you know, printed on cardboard to look old and cut them and sold them. So here is a box full of them. I don't even want to guess. Let's see how many are in here. I don't know. This is the full stack. I'm not sure if it says how many. The box doesn't say how many is in here. So I don't know. 1963 is the copyright. 250 for the whole box. So these um, are really fun around back to school time. They uh, just make fun little booth accents in your booth. If you're trying to add a little back to school flair to your booth, you can drop some ramp. You can um, stick them down in like an old floor brush, you know, kind of, I don't have one to show you, I wish I did, but an old floor brush, boop, pop this down in here. They're just super cute and they're easy, easy decorative accents. They've already got that patina whole box for 250. I think it may be the thing I'm most excited about in the whole haul. Okay, I wound up not buying anything at the Salvation Army flea market that I showed you guys, but off camera the next day, I did hit up another flea market and I found a couple things there. So this was one that I found this painted canvas and it was $6 and all of their art that day was 40% off or 30% off, I don't remember. I paid like 420, so whatever, that's probably 30, that's 30% 30 off. Um, I love old amateur canvas art. So this one, pretty colors. I like that it's kind of worn up here. Here's the back. It was a great find, great find. Super excited about this. Also at that thrift store, this is pretty cobalt blue bottle. It was three bucks. I bought it because I just thought it was really unique. I don't know initially what it went to. 
but I like the two little handles, the ribbing. It's pretty, not chipped, doesn't have any markings or anything on it. I don't know, but $3 um, was a nice price for that. All right, this I also grabbed from the thrift store. It is a vintage or antique, not completely sure of the age, McDonald Perfect Seal Jar marked with number four. It still has the glass lid, everything's intact. This guy was four bucks, so I am not a jar expert, y'all. You can see I've got a couple other jars. I've got a ball jar up there, I've got an Atlas jar, and so I know that the different brands have different values. I did look this one specifically up on Etsy, and the prices are more than four dollars, some of them a good bit more, and so I thought it was a great a great piece, um, a good buy, but really when I buy jars, like I'm buying them a lot just for their decorative value. I know some of you guys are really keen kind of book value collectors and that's awesome. I don't have the space in my brain for all of that knowledge. And so when I shop, I'm mostly shopping for decorative value and I know people love these blue jars. I don't see a lot of them that have um, the glass lid still with them. So. I thought $4 was a fantastic price for this piece. Okay, also from the thrift store, this I just thought was really fun. It's just, a, it's a tumbler of these old guys playing golf. Look at it. So it, it, like it's in great shape, the paint of them, four of them hanging out. It was 50 cents. So great little Father's Day gift for someone. I don't think I'll have any trouble selling it to somebody. I, don't, I may let my husband keep it. He's gonna play golf. My dad plays golf. Maybe I should give it to my dad but I just thought it was really fun. It was the only one, so surely it was initially part of a set, maybe. It was the only one they had. It was 50 cents. I grabbed that. All right, now you guys remember a couple haul videos ago, I grabbed a bunch of these green uh, florist vases. They are marked, um, well, that one's not. This one says Brody Company. Most of them are marked Hoosier, and you guys were kind enough to remind me that these are just mass-produced florist vases, and I had a couple people tell me that they have no value at all, and so just again, I'm gonna remind you of decorative value. Like, yes, these pieces are a dime a dozen, but for decorative value, they have a nice value and I've been selling them. The ones that I bought, you guys, I've sold. So I paid between a dollar and a dollar fifty um, for each of these and I've been selling them at my booth for around 10. So that's not a bad price, I don't think. Um, this one I liked, it's a little bit more modern looking. It's got the fluting. This is, ooh, almost dropped it. This is another pretty one, kind of a little bit more geometric diamond. And then this one is a little bit bigger, so you can see. Um, different than the other ones that I've had, dollar, dollar fifty. I like them all displayed together. I really do think if somebody's pulling together a cool retro kitchen, that having a hutch full of a bunch of these is makes for a really great display. So who cares that they're not super collectible, that they're everywhere. Who cares? They're still fun and they're fun for decor. So um, when I saw these that were a little bit different, I grabbed them for a super cheap price. You may have seen these things back in my DIY patio video. I didn't get a chance to show them to you when I, uh, when I picked them up, so I thought I'd go ahead and show them to you now. But one is this pretty glass pitcher. Now, if it, you can tell it's got kind of a very light minty blue aquamarine. I know that's a, that's a lot of mint, blue, aquamarine. That's a lot, but it's, the tag said green. To me, it looks a little bit more blue. Really pretty pattern in the glass, pretty handle. Um, does have tiny chip right here. You can see it. Tiny, tiny chip. Again, for me, I don't really care about that. Not a big deal. The spout, as long as there's not a big chip around the spout, the spout's nice and clean. This was $6.00. So um, I've been selling vintage pictures. This one I really like. I really like this color and I haven't seen a color like this. So this one may stay here with me personally, but six bucks is a great price on this. Okay, so I also had this staged out in my patio video. It came from a local flea market. Um, really pretty vintage brass candelabra. So it's got one, two, three, four, five spots. Nice size. Um, I paid $8.50, which um, because I plan to keep it for my patio video, a little bit higher up and y'all again brass stuff brass candlesticks are just anywhere you go they're just expensive right now so um i thought that was still a fair price for this um and just a unique unique piece i really liked it all right two more things that i grabbed uh for my patio 
this sweet little just yellow tray. It's kind of rested on the back, but um, I wanted to have some yellow accents on my patio. And so um, this was $3.95. So uh, I like just the little floral. Don't mind about the few little rust spots. It's really cute out, out there on my patio in a nice little size. And then this sweet little bunny, he was a couple dollars. I think I think that someone made him. I can just barely read, you know, make out something right there. Um, when I was a kid, my mom went and did ceramics. Did anybody else have, did you guys go do ceramics or did you have a mom that did ceramics? Like she, there was a local studio and she would go. And so this totally looks like something that she would have done back in that age, but he's super cute and it's nice and heavy, couple bucks, makes a cute patio piece. So I grabbed him too. All right, so that's what we have today. So I would love to hear in the comments if there was a piece that you guys really liked, something you thought was super cool or maybe you hadn't seen before, or if you have ideas for how you would use some of these pieces or how you would stage them, I would love to hear from you. If you're not a Lost and Found subscriber, please subscribe to our channel. There's still like two thirds of the people that watch my videos are not subscribers, which is crazy. So go ahead and join us, jump right on in. Um, we do lots of these videos. I'm always out hunting, finding stuff. I hope that you guys enjoy them. You do really seem to enjoy them. We always get good views on them. So I hope they're fun for you. They're fun for me to do. So uh, thanks so much for joining me today. I'm gonna keep working on pricing this stuff. Again, a good amount of this will be loaded into our online store. If you're a US-based shopper, then you can go check that out here at this link and maybe grab something that you saw that you loved. So thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you guys soon.